Into the Light, it's brought not only onslaught firefight modes, exotic missions returning, but also tons of new lore. Today in this video we go over lore from three of the weapons. With the Midnight Coup, Saladin and Shaq speak about Kallus and Keidel. Luna's Howl, a guardian gets some war beast pups. And in Recluse, a vice representative shows Lord Shax the brand new Recluse, and he feels a heartfelt connection to the first Queen's Wrath. Let's take a look. An arrow whined out of nowhere. It drove through his shoulder, penetrating his armor as though it were paper, not plasteel. No enemies on his tracker. So then where? The second arrow hit harder than the first, straight through his other shoulder, skewering the joint. He twisted his head, saw the arrowhead protruding through his pauldron, chuckled humorously, looked through the trees. The asteroids of the reef did not afford many hiding places, even those which had been terraformed to support plants and animals, so the shooter had to be... The third arrow penetrated his thigh. He laughed aloud. Transmat, his ghost suggested, a quiet voice in his mind. No, they started this. I'll finish it. Unable to lift any of his own weapons in defense, concerned that he might compromise his ghost if he made any attempt to heal himself with the light, Lord Shax began to limp toward the shooter's likeliest vantage. This was the work of a ballista, he supposed. Dark Age weaponry. Nothing else could hit so hard. As he tottered along, an awoken woman in the near distance seemed to rise from the forest floor. She cast aside her camouflage and stood straight. He stopped to gawk. She was as tall as he was, if not taller. Her bow, just a bow, an ordinary bow was certainly taller. You're trespassing on awoken territory, guardian, she called to him. Declare yourself. Who are you? he asked, astounded. I am the Queen's Wrath. Declare yourself. I will not ask again. She raised her bow, drawing it to its full capacity. He watched in amazement. It was just a bow, and she was just an ordinary awoken woman. And yet, you are a tempest, he replied humbly. In the next instant, she killed him. It was the start of a beautiful friendship. So that was from the first Recluse Lord Tab a long time ago. This showed us the relationship between Shax and Sir Ido and how they became super close friends. We've had some other connections throughout the years, but from new lore from the Into the Light recluse, we get sort of an update on this connection. Per your request, Lord Shax, the Viced Rep waved two fingers toward a nearby frame, which prompted it to open a metal suitcase on the table. Similar to your original design, the Rep continued, with a few additions from our engineering team. She picked a speck of lint from the lapel of her couture jacket as she spoke. Shax examined the compact submachine gun, encased snugly in contoured foam. Seeing the weapon's profile stung him with memories, like an arrow through the shoulder. It's magnificent, he declared softly. She would have loved it. For a moment, the former warlord seemed lost in fond reverie. The vice rep sat motionless at first, not wishing to disturb the legendary titan's rare display of vulnerability. But then she decided to press her advantage. I hear the former Queen's Wrath was an impressive woman, she prompted. Lord Shags blinked, and the tenderness vanished from his eyes. He slammed the case shut. Give my compliments to your engineers, he replied gruffly. So it's great that these new weapons are getting some updated lore that hint back at those previous cards. When Shaq saw the profile of the weapon, it said it stung him with the memories of Sir Ido, his friend, like an arrow through the shoulder, like she shot him in the first card. Let's now take a look at Luna's Howl. Now, Luna's Howl is not yet available in-game, but all the lore is on Ishtar Collective. Again, I'm going to start by reading the old version of the lore card. Yosef opened the door. Shaq's filled the hallway beyond. You look like hell, said the crucible handler. Yosef scoffed. Get out of here. I have Hive to hunt. No time for crucible today. Hive? You lost her on the moon? Yosef said nothing. You aren't the only guardian to leave loved ones behind on that rock. Shax held out a long, lacquered box. 
The gunsmith asked me to deliver this personally. What's Banshee thinking? I can't afford this. I took care of it, scavenged parts from my personal collection. Yosef considered it a moment. It's a good gun. She was a good dog. This isn't a replacement, but it will help you finish your business with the hive. Then I expect to see you back in the crucible. We could use the inspiration. So Yosef a guardian lost his dog on the moon. They went to the moon together and you can actually see the dog's collar as a little grave reminder near the Garden of Salvation entrance portal. In the new Luna's Howl lore, Yosef gets a new friend, or rather a couple of them. Yosef opened the door. Shacks filled the hallway beyond. You look tired, said the crucible handler, but I have just the right thing to get you buzzing. No time for crucible, Yosef dissembled. Another day. I'll hold you to that, but that's not what I meant. Yosef said nothing. I was speaking with Saladin, Shacks continued. We were remembering all the people we left behind over the years. Your name came up. Oh yeah? Shax held out a cardboard box, perforated with large holes. The Vallis asked me to deliver this. Yosef opened the box. At the bottom, in a nest of cloud accretions, were two sleeping war beast pups. They're not replacements, Shax explained, but we hope they bring some light back into your life. They're perfect, Yosef said, his voice tender. Thank you. See them settled. Then I expect you back in the crucible to teach my pups a thing or two. And finally, we have the Midnight Coup card. The original reads, The conspirators came late in the night, skulking into my court while we were caroused. Gaul himself led the coup, and it was by his own Red Legion that they were arrested. Imagine my surprise to see the consul stride into my court so puffed up with pride. He took cheap pleasure hurling spittle in my face. We were frog marched to the Leviathan under cover of darkness. There was to be no execution. Gaul and the consul feared the mob. They knew how tenuous their grip on power would be and how the people adored their god emperor. Gaul dared not look me in the eye. What was the emotion on his face? Was it shame? How could he bear such hate for one who had been as a father to him? We were sealed inside the Leviathan and ejected into the furthest reaches of space, left to the same fate I had determined for the council long ago. We were left to die. From the new card. That's awfully ruthless, no? Lord Shax queried. It's one thing to kill an enemy in combat, but executions, that's dirty business. I know from experience. Hmm, Saladin grumbled, turning the elaborate hand cannon over in his hands. I felt the same way at the time. I was content to let Callus ride away in deep space, drinking himself into oblivion. Saladin furrowed his brow. But after Neomuna, after going tusk to tusk with the Shadow Legion, I wonder if his exile was mercy or weakness. Careful, Vallis, Shax quipped. Your empress might not take kindly to that sort of talk. Saladin passed the hand cannon back to Shax with an approving nod. I doubt she feels differently, seeing her father change like that. Had to be harder in the long run. Shax holstered the cannon. Maybe so, but that's what sets Keitel apart. It's what sets the vanguard apart, acting with honor, even at great cost to ourselves. Sometimes our honor is the cost. Saladin rebutted, and we better remember that on the other side of the portal. So there you have it, Guardian, some of the lore from this new Into the Light update. I didn't want to cover everything in one video, I want to kind of break it up, get you different stories and different moments. So if you'd like to see some more just like this, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. I thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video.